Oh, there we go. Right, good morning. Hello, how is everybody today? I hope you're well. Um, we've got a lot of fabrics to show you today. Gonna do a little bit of pattern pairing as well with some fabrics this morning. Um, morning, Linda, hello, how are you? Uh, and I think it's kind of more about comfy stuff. Do you know what, the whole of 2020 has been about comfy clothes, hasn't it really? Because we haven't been able to go anywhere or do anything. Um, I don't know about you, but I am living at the moment in uh, jeans and comfy things. I haven't dressed up to go anywhere at all. But having said that, um, you guys appear to have really liked the fabrics that we had last week, considering we've got none left now. I know, I know, yeah. So we have more coming, which is really good. Um, oh, we've got a few people joining us this morning. Uh, morning, Julia. Hello. Uh, hi, Linda. Hello, Tina. Hello, Sue. Hello, Mary. Uh, Mondi. Morning, Mandy. <laughs> there we go. Hello, how are you? Uh, morning, Emma. Hi, Patricia. So, yeah, it's a bit, oh, it's a bit dismal out there today, isn't it? Looking out the window. But the trees are a lovely colour, so we have to look for the positive, don't we? As we've been trying to do all year really um so i wanted to oh brilliant challenge popped up the pmp code this morning that's fantastic that's quick that's on the ball i know oh there's no flies on sharon she that's good um oh nicola says please can you tell me the fabric that you did the wrap top um yes i absolutely will because we've got it today um i'm going to show it to you uh, a bit later on so the wrap top i can grab it in a minute actually because it's over there um yeah, it's a linen and cotton mix, which is really nice. And I'm going to talk about it as we go through today. So that's really good. Um, oh, ooh, look, we've got some love. Dan Howard in lovely Wensleydale. Oh, nice. Oh. Nice bit of cheese. Hey, he's asking if you have any scuba. Uh, scuba. It, scuba is something that we don't really do, Kay. Um, and I'm, that's purely down to my... <laughs> It's purely down to my personal preference, I'm afraid. It's one of those fabrics that I just can't get to grips with there are some really lovely ones out there and i know that it's popular but i must admit i tend to prefer natural fibers if i can find them um so it isn't something that we've got at the moment i'm afraid uh oh morning claire hello how are you um oh morning marilyn morning elizabeth morning donna um and sharon has pinned the PMP code, so that should be there for you to use today. So, right. Uh, Sue says, oh, phew, glad I got bought the fabric last week. It, absolutely, absolutely. Honestly, it's been flying out of the doors. It really has. The beautiful brocade fabrics were so popular. Honestly, you guys are gonna look so glam this Christmas. You really are. But after the glam, you kind of need a little bit of R&R, &R, don't you? And that's what we've got covered today. So one of the things that I wanted to show you as well was uh, ideas for the fabrics. So we've got these beautiful British wool checks. But actually, we were talking about it earlier on this morning, thinking, oh, my God, these would look amazing in bags. So if any of you are bag makers, these would be absolutely gorgeous fabrics. And we were thinking, actually, one of them made up in the Arden bag would be amazing because we've got the lovely, if I prop that there, there we go. Um, we've got webbing that kind of goes with all of the fabrics that we've got. So this beautiful ruby kind of cranberry color just picks out that stripe in the um, navy and vermilion check, which I think is really nice. So you could pair that actually with some of our dark gray denim. That would work really nicely. Um, and then we've got this really nice kind of sky blue and that just picks out the blue in uh, in this one here, which I think is rather nice. So you can see the colours there. And then we've got the dark blue, which just goes really nicely with this grey with the electric blue. Or you could even put the ruby with that actually as well, which would look just as nice. So a little bit of a different way of using our fabrics rather than for clothes. Um, you can have a go at making bags as well. Um, 
Is the Arden bag available as a kit and pattern? It is, yes. Okay. You can download the pattern or we do the kits. Now the kits will come with the basic kind of fabrics, the, the um, drill and the denim. But once you've got those, then you can make it out of whatever you want. And I think you're going to need, well, our minimum order online is half a metre. So if you got yourself half a metre of wool, half a metre of denim, and then lined it with the cotton drill, you'd probably get half a metre of that as well. And that would do you more, probably two, possibly three bags, actually. So it's quite a cost-effective way of doing that. So you could make one for yourself and then um, give a few away as presents, which is a really good idea. Yes. The, what we tend to do is allow two metres of the webbing per bag because it goes right the way down. Um, you could get away with a little bit less if you wanted to, but then you're kind of left with a bit of a shorter handle. So um, I think that's a really nice way of using the fabric. So not just for clothing, but actually they work ideally for bags as well, which I think is a really good idea. Um, let's just see. Oh, we've got some comments coming in. Oh, Jan says, lovely navy and rust red wool. Ready for your Desdemona skirt. Oh, nice. I like that. Uh, Nicola says, oh, thank you very much. Your kind of fabric. Fabulous. That's really good. Um, cases, I have a pair of leggings that I need are scuba and I was wanted to reproduce them. Oh, I see. We have got um, now scuba is like neoprene, neoprene, crimpoline kind of fabric. If you've got leggings in scuba, it might not be scuba. It might just be a double jersey because scuba doesn't generally tend to have quite so much stretch. With leggings, you need something that's got a four-way stretch, which we have got fabric that's suitable for, and I will show you a bit later. Um, Claire says, good morning. I'm eating an almond croissant from Moore. All oh. I'm going to say is, where's ours? Right. I know. Outrageous behaviour. Claire needs to go on a mission when she comes here. <laughs> she needs to bring almond croissants. That's the deal. Well, yes, we'll see. We'll see. If you are local to Stratford, try more bakery in oh, Bell's Court. It is really absolutely good. to die for. Their breakfasts are amazing. They really are lovely. Um, oh, Laura says, you're going to make a Julia in navy jersey using the sequin fabric. Ooh, nice. And a, Yeah. Using the sequin fabric in navy for the cuff. Ooh, I like that idea. That's going to, well, can I, should I make the sleeve cuff with a layer of jersey inside the cuff? To be honest, I probably would. Actually, I'd split the cuff so you've got a smooth layer inside and then have your sequin on the outside and that would be fine. That would look really good, actually. I think we need pictures afterwards. I think we do need pictures, actually. Yeah. I think we do. Please don't forget, it. if you have got any of the brocades or any of the sequins or lovely fabrics that we had last week, please send us a photo. We would love to see you in whatever you've made, which is fantastic, or tag us on social media. So if you put at sew me something or hashtag sew me something, we'll be able to find you um, because we really, really love watching and seeing what you guys are doing with our fabrics and patterns because that's what we're here for, really, which is really cool. Um, oh, Anne says, good morning and great to catch us live. That's brilliant. Instead of two, usual two days later. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's Hello, brilliant. Anne. Lovely. So we've got bag fabric or potential bag fabric. But don't forget, these were, fabrics would work just as well for um, Viola, uh, Desdemona. Ursula Pinafore would be really nice. Um, you could make a cape dress in these as well. Oh, we've got a lovely little... Bee. Is that a bee or is that we've got so many flying things around here at the moment? We have um, we have masonry bees that live in the brickwork outside the studio, and occasionally we have a bee works its way into the studio in here. So, luckily, I don't mind bees. Otherwise, people do get a bit flappy, but that's fine. Oh, I so love bees. You love bees, don't you? Yeah. Yes, that's fine. You're a green person, aren't oh, you? I am a green person. That's lovely. Um, so we've got these lovely walls. Now I'm going to pop these over to one side because I can show you other things then as well. I'm going to pop those down there so we've got them out of the way and I will prop these up down here. So it's all about kind of comfy things today. Now last week you were holding up the patterns as you were talking about. I'm yourself. going to be doing I exactly that. I wondered if we could have any feedback as to whether Ooh, people... Oh was that useful? Yeah. Yes. 
Was that useful? When, oh, yeah, um, I'm sorry, I can't read and talk at the same time. Answer the question first. Yes, okay, let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Um, is it useful if I hold up the patterns as we're talking about them with the fabric? I've got them all here. So I can wave them around so that you know what patterns I'm talking about. Um, there we go. Uh, all Lynn says, we're cheering you up on this miserable morning. Well, that's what we're here for, Lynn. I hope you're feeling happier. Oh, here it goes. I can just hear, <laughs> just hear this buzz go past my ear. <laughs> morning, Linda. Oh, it's your first time for looking in. Thank you for joining us. That's really good. Um, oh, Laura, yes. Send us a pic. Lovely. That'd be brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Sharon's popping up all the fabrics now, so that's really good. OK, Catherine says, yes, please, to show in the, showing the patterns. No problem. Now, I'm kind of going for comfy because I love all the brocades and stuff like that. But actually, to be honest, I am probably going to be in pyjamas on Christmas Day for the whole day. Aren't we dressing up? No. OK. <laughs> well, we can't, might do. But I'm still going to be putting my pyjama bottoms on because they're just really comfy. Yeah, that's right. So that's fine. Now, our Rosalind pattern, which is our pyjamas. There we go. Zoom in. Now, the bottoms of these you can make in jersey fabric. So they are really, really comfy. And it works beautifully paired with a peas blossom top. Where is it? There we are. There. Now, peas has got three different necklines. So you've got a round neck, a V-neck, and you've got the drapey kind of cowl neck. So either the round or the V, well, whichever one you like, really, could work really nicely with the pyjama bottoms. So those are a really nice combination. So what I've got are a few fabric combinations that would work really nicely with those two. Obviously, you can use these fabrics for other things as well, but I love this one. It is North Star Serene, and it has a lovely charcoal grey and a very pale aqua little star pattern on that. I think that's really lovely. So you could quite easily make a pair of the pyjama bottoms in this and then have a top to go with it. Now, this would actually make up really nicely in the Julia as well. So if you wanted something that was comfy and loungy, that wasn't too kind of pyjama-y, um, then I think this would work really nicely. It is so soft, it really is. I don't know if I've got Julia in here. Julia is the one I'm wearing. This is the really wide, boxy pocket top. Now, I've made it in linen, but we did originally design it with um, a jersey fabric. I don't know if it's over there, actually. <laughs> so don't take your headphones off before you walk across the studio. It always helps, doesn't it? I completely forget something. Oh, dear. That doesn't make me laugh. No, it's fine. Or a Regan. That would work really nicely as well. A little bit more kind of sweatshirty, but... Um, zoom in on the Regan. There we are. Okay, that's cool. Um, brilliant. Sharon's popping up all the fabrics in uh, the comments as well. So if you are interested, click it through. Now, I, I can't r stress this enough. If you like it, buy it because our fabric at the moment is just flying out the door. It really is. Um, I think this is one of those things, isn't it? We haven't got our gardens necessarily to play around in and, uh, as we did in the first lockdown. So lockdown 2.0 if it is really a lockdown. I mean, there's too much going on, really. Um, but now is the time to sew, isn't it, really? This is what we want to spend our time doing. Well, once I, I want to spend my time doing. Um, I think these are a really nice colour combination, actually, and I think they work beautifully. I do quite fancy a Julia top in this myself, actually. You could even, actually, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to be really matchy-matchy, you could actually have a pair of pyjama bottoms in the printed jersey, make your top, whichever one you want to use, out of the um, sweater knit, but use the neckband and the cuffs out of the jersey. So it's kind of like a proper matchy-matchy outfit. Mm. 
which would be quite nice. So I like those. I like those very much. Now, if you want proper pyjamas, we've got the check. So I love this. This is a really nice one. It's a lovely soft kind of brushed cotton. And again, it's a really nice one, actually. It's, um, but this is kind of like proper, a bit more traditional kind of pyjamas. It'd be great if, now our pyjama pattern is unisex, actually. So all you need to do is make it a bit longer if you want to make it for a bloke. So I've made a few pairs for Charlie Bud. Which are much longer. Which are much, much longer, considering he's Jolly Green Giant. Um, and I've also made some for my son as well. So um, it's a really versatile pattern. Um, you don't have to put the drawstring in if you don't want to. It, you could just leave it elasticated or you could just have it as a drawstring, which is either option. So let's have a quick look. Um, oh, Marilyn, where can you find the new top pattern? The aerial top in the sewing studio is in the in-depth courses. So if you hop over to that section of the website, it'll be in there and then you can download the pattern or you can order it and we do it as a PDF printed one for you. Um, and then you can enjoy the delights of Hermione. Let's see if we've missed any other comments. The, uh, uh, do you said the aerial... Like oh, the... I meant the Hermione. Did I say aerial or yes. Hermione? Yes, you said aerial. Aerial of the Aerial is here. Those Hermione is over there. Hermione's the top. Yeah, Hermione is the top. Yes. See, it's... Oh dear, we've lost lights. Yeah. But that's okay, we've been plunged into darkness. Um, oh, oh, Laura, yes, actually, when you see the bee in the garden looking poorly, give it watered down honey and water on a saucer. Its little tongue spike thing will drink it. Within minutes, they will revive and fly away. I know, I've done that. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it, to do. Oh, here we go. We've got lights back on again in a minute. Yeah. What was that then? Is it a uh, battery or something, or is it a, a plug? It's heating up oh, too much. Oh, I see. Uh, Oh, can I tilt them as you can't see with the lights? Okay, Tina, right, I will. So if the, the lighting is bouncing off the patterns, I'll try and kind of angle it a bit for you. That's cool. Um, Mary says, could you make a peas blossom with long sleeves? Would you just extend the sleeve lines? You could, Mary, absolutely, depending on how wide your fabric is, because if you want to include it, as the sleeve as part of the body, so almost like a big, almost, um, like a bat wing kind of thing, it's going to be dependent on how wide your fabric is. So a narrow fabric, you might not be able to do it. Um, but a wider fabric, you probably could. So yeah, I would just measure how wide you want it around the wrist. And then you can just extend it and narrow it down so that you've got the, the, the wrist of your sleeve is as wide as you need it to be. So you're kind of tapering it down. But yep, absolutely, you can do that. That is a brilliant way of getting extra use out of your pattern, really. Oh, hello. <laughs> We're back on again. Yes. That's good. Um, <laughs> Kathy says your brain doesn't retain as much these in these days. Do you know what, love? I know the feeling. I really do. Um, I don't know whether it's lockdown, my age, or whatever, really. But honestly, my brain just cannot hold information at the moment. Um, Oh, Linda says you really like square neck tops, but patterns are hard to find at the moment. That's interesting. Yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? Again, it's a bit like it's not really fashionable at the moment, although maybe it is. Maybe it's coming back. Who knows? Um, do we sell the cuffs and the neckband fabric? Yes, Lynn, we do. And we're going to be coming to that in a sec. So, pyjamas. Now, the other thing that I want to show you, actually, I'm going to get rid of this one now, move that one out of the way, because to kind of go with these colours, which I think are really lovely, We've got this teal luxury crepe. Now, this is normally, I would say, a kind of slightly more formal fabric. But actually, when you pair it with um, like a jersey or a knit, oh, there we go, those two together, I think are really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could have a kind of a slightly silkier pair of trousers, which would be really nice. Um, these made up in a Porsche would look amazing. So Porsche are, let me find them, would be our wide leg trousers. There we go. 
So those are the Porsche. That way? Sorry, yeah, that's that right. way. Yeah. Cool. So these are the Porsche. They are really nice fitting trousers. They just kind of hug you over the hips, but then fall straight down. Um, it's a nice one to do. And if you need to do, if you get like a little bit of a gape at the back here, there are really easy alteration to make on these. Um, there are a few more processes. So you have got pockets and you've got a fly zip, but it's a nice uncomplicated way of doing it. So these I think would be really lovely paired with this lovely sweater knit as well. Or actually they do look quite nice with the um, printed jersey that we've got there. In fact, I think all of those are a quite nice color combination, which is really cool. Now the other thing, so I'm gonna move these out of the way now so we can go to the other ones. I'm gonna pop those at the back. So we have like a little conveyor belt going of fabric. There we are. Now, this is another one I think is really lovely. Now, we've got the two colours at the moment in the sweater knit. Actually, we've got two other colours on the website that you can have a look at as well, but I haven't got those out today. But this is really pretty. So again, I think kind of sticking with something that's a bit more comfy, a bit more pyjama-y, lounge wear kind of thing. I think this lovely print here is really nice, which is the little butterflies. Now, this has got both the kind of that sort of pale teal aqua colour and the watermelon in it as well. So I think that would work really nicely as a kind of nice comfy loungy combination, which is quite cool. There we go, all oh, brilliant. Sharon's popped the um, Porsche trousers up there. Now this is the other colourway of the kind of slightly more traditional check that we've got for PJs. But again, I think it goes really nicely with the pink sweater knit. So if you want something that's not too kind of girly girly, I think this would be a really nice combination actually. Um, oh, let's have a quick look and see what we've got going on. Oh, Sue, so you love Porsche trousers, I know. They are amazing, aren't they? Edwina says, is the scrub trouser pattern similar to the Rosalind trouser pattern? Yes, similar but different, if you see what I mean. It's basically a drawstring pair of trousers. Um, so yeah, you, if you've got the scrubs pattern, you could use that. That's no reason why you couldn't actually. And that would work just as well. Um, oh, Julia says, you made a Julia out of the watermelon. So comfy. I know, it is so nice, isn't it? It is really lovely. Sharon's popping up the links, which is brilliant. Let me see what other comments I am missing. Oh, Claire says, you've made the Imogen in the floral river viscose. Would you suggest interfacing both neckbands? Yes, absolutely. You want to use something really, really soft, like the ultra soft iron-on interfacing that we've got available on the website. Um, something that's going to be, because you, that neckband is such a curved shape. I'm gonna show you the Imogen, because I have it here. Um, where's she gone? Pick a pattern, Eddie pattern. Imogen, there we go. So this is Imogen and it has got a curved neck band. So you are going to need to support the fabric there because it's cut on a curve. It's very easy to get the fabric to distort out, out of shape. So you want that little extra layer of interfacing on both of them. I would probably, especially with the viscose, because it's quite a lightweight one, um, just to help support the fabric. It's not necessarily going to change it and make it stiffer. It's just going to help prevent it stretching out of shape. So I would definitely interface. That's a good call. Um, let me have a quick look now. I need my other glasses. Honestly, I've got so many pairs of glasses going on at the moment. I've got another pair upstairs as well. And that's just for using on the computer. Outrageous. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, brilliant more. Sharon's doing an amazing job, says Nicola. Yes, she absolutely is. She's on the ball getting everything up there so you can click through, which is fine. So back to the fabrics. So these ones, I think, are probably are definitely pyjama fabrics. Although, I don't know, you could make a... Actually, a pyjama top out of this would make quite a nice kind of slightly retro indie 90s lumberjack kind of shirt, which well, are quite popular. I know. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all is back from university at the moment on reading week, which is actually really lovely to have at home, which is quite nice. Um, and she's been talking about this because her favourite brand at the moment is Zara, of course, because she's 18. Um, and she was showing me lots of pictures of uh, kind of lumberjack type shirts. So, and I remember wearing those as well. I do 
Yeah, it's kind of very kind of like indie, <sighs> Seattle kind of band, yeah. grungy type stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't think I've ever grown out, grown that actually, to be honest. So more fabrics, that's what we need. Now these arrived in and we've got a few different ones and I'm going to try and get some more in. I've got another one that I'm going to show you of these. These are the quilted jerseys, but they've got the stripes on the back which is really cool. So we've got these in quite a few different colorways at the moment. Um, and I love this. This is perfect. If you've got a top that has uh, kind of contrasting areas that, that you can make a real feature of. So for example, like, the, like I've done with my Julia, I've got contrasting cuffs and neckband. So you can really easily turn the fabric over and use the reverse of it to kind of make an impact. You could have the whole thing as stripey, and just have the little dots as a, as a neck band feature, or you can have it the other way around. I love it, I think it's so nice, actually. We've got a few different colorways. We've got, uh, yep, we've got gray, we've got another pink one. Um, we've got a navy and silver, we've got gray and yellow, we've got gray and silver. We've got quite a few different ones, and I'm getting more in as well, so that's really good. Honestly, fabric at the moment is flying out of the door which is fabulous. Let's have a quick catch up. I'd love a dressing gown in the check. Alison, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be very nice. Uh, yeah, a proper old school dressing gown. Yes, Emma Smith. Oh, a shacket. I <laughs> know, yes. What's that? A shacket is like a, an overshirt that you kind of wear as a jacket. Oh, right. So you can have like a t-shirt underneath. It's exactly like the one that we've done for the book. Oh, okay. Yes. It's coming, it's coming. Um, would work well. Yeah, but the, it's just the name, isn't it? Shacket. It just, it, it's just wrong. Yeah. I don't to I totally get what you're talking about. Or a jerk. <laughs> Shacket or a jerk. <laughs> don't, that's going to keep me going all day now. <laughs> that's brilliant, yeah. Um, or Christine, love a granddad shirt. I know the feeling. I do know the feeling. Um, oh, Tina says, I've done that quilted fabric in the Julia with the navy and pink. Oh, nice. I know, I'm trying to get the navy and pink back in again, actually. It was out of stock when I tried to get hold of it. But it is a really lovely fabric. And I think, again, now you could, oh, actually, you could almost have a pair of um, aerial without the pockets in a sweater knit. And that would be quite nice, actually. I think it's quite... I think it's quite interesting when using different fabrics sometimes. So these are just a really basic pair of trousers. Now, but they've got a little bit of extra features on them. So you've got that fly and you've got the pocket detail as well. So it works better with wovens, but I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't have a go at doing it with a jersey, to be honest. As long as you're interfacing the bits that you need to around the pocket openings and the fly, why not give it a go? Why not give it a go? So let's move oops, these out the way so we can make room for more. Oh, there we are. It's these long ones. I need to get the long ones boarded. So they're getting out of the way. There we are. Right, let's bring these forward. Cool. Now this is a lovely, now we're kind of getting into, we've tried to colour it all up again because I think it's quite nice when you do that because you're going to wear colours rather than, do you find it, this is a bit of feedback here, do you prefer it when we colour up the fabrics or would you prefer to say, right, okay, all of these fabrics are suitable for a particular pattern or do you kind of like mixing and matching things and almost making little kind of outfit ideas? Let me know, whichever works for you. Uh, oh, Emma says, when I used to work, we made a sholo a top with a wooden front. Oh, with a woven front and collar and sleeves and a knitted back, making it a combination of shirt and polo. A sh ah, a sholo. What? I like that. I've That's funny. That. I like that. that. Yeah. Oh, Deb, you prefer colouring up. That's good. So we're doing the right thing then. That's brilliant. Sometimes it's easier. Well, I don't know. Is it easier to have all the same kind of fabrics in a group? But if you prefer colouring it up, I think it's more pleasing to the eye, isn't it, really? It is, actually, yeah. Yes. Um, 
brilliant. People are liking the mix and match and stuff. That's lovely. So we shall carry on, which is brilliant. Now, this is another lovely one. Now, again, I'm kind of bringing out similar fabrics, but in different colorways, just to kind of show you what the options are. This is another lovely art gallery jersey. And again, I think it just goes really lovely, really nicely with the watermelon sweater knit. I am very excited about this. We've got plans for this kind of fabric, actually. And again, I think it's really lovely. We've got it with the navy luxury crepe, which again is one of my, it is, it is a synthetic, it is a polyester, but it's such a nice quality one. It really is. Now this with um, one of the multicolored ribs or the, uh, the bright colored ribs, I think would be amazing as a really kind of much smarter, even actually I'm trying desperately to get hold of sparkly rib at the moment because I think that would be really nice. So a Regan top with um, a sparkly rib, I think would look fantastic. Now, you don't have to, if I find the Regan, there we go, that's the Regan. You don't have to have, Hold it. that way. Square it on the tip of the camera. Yeah. There we go. So you don't have to have the elasticated ribbing around the waist. You could just make it a little bit longer so that it just sits on the hip. So it's not too much like a sweatshirt. It's just a bit more like a casual top that's got elasticated neckband and wrist, which would work really nicely. So that would be brilliant. In fact, this would work. You could, I mean, again, you could have a lovely plain sort of silky top and then use a bit of stretch as a wristband, as a, as a kind of a patterned collar and cuffs, which I think is really nice. This is another one, another art gallery. Now, I have to say, I've got a pair of leggings out of this that I've had for a few years now, and it washes so well, it really does. But again, you could have just a little bit of the ribbing or the stretchy bit that you need around the neckline and the cuffs, just with a plain silky top. So again, that would work really nicely in the Julia that I'm wearing as well. Um, so you don't have to necessarily stick to recommended fabrics as long as you kind of know what you're up to. Um, oh, there we go. Marilyn says, oh, loving the colouring up. Not very good with colour, so grateful for the tips. Oh, that's good. That's lovely. Shows the colours better when you can't see true colours on the web. That's actually very true. Yeah, we can't see the fabrics for real. Mix and match is great. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. That's lovely, lovely, lovely. So don't forget, we can send out samples, although to be honest, some of the fabrics, by the time you've got the sample, they've sold out. Um, so yeah, it is, I know it's tricky, isn't it, seeing things on a screen? It's really hard. And this is some of the fabrics that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a minute are really hard, but they are so lovely and you are so gonna want them. Um, I will show you those in a sec. So we've got the two jerseys here. Again, they would make up really nicely in some of our ordinary patterns. So for example, actually the feathers and this one, what's it, I can't remember what it's called now. Where is it? Oh, Seren Branchlet, there we go. That would be beautiful for a Cordelia, which is just like a, a lovely kind of easy day dress. So that's our Cordelia. Now, again, we do this as a course in the sewing studio. So if you've not worked with knit fabrics before, this is quite a nice one to have a go with. It's actually a very, we've got the twist in the middle, which does kind of confuse a little bit, but actually it's so easy to do. And I go through it all step by step in the videos. So this is one of the beauty of doing online courses is that you can pause and rewind and replay as much as you like until it makes sense, which is a brilliant thing to do. Um, this is a lovely one. So it's brilliant for summer. It has a sleeveless version. It has little kind of flippy butterfly sleeves and it has a full length version as well, which is really nice for this time of year. So you could actually make a sleeveless one and then make a long sleeve t-shirt to wear underneath it. And that just works perfectly well. Um, so this would be lovely. We've got plain jerseys as well, which would be really nice in a, a long sleeve tee that you could wear underneath any of these actually, which would be really nice. So this would work perfectly for a normal kind of daytime dress, um, as well as the kind of comfy pyjama-y type stuff as well, which is really cool. 
So let me move these out the way. We're gradually getting through this now, gradually getting through this. Oops. Uh, there's a question there oh. from Sharon, you need to learn how to attach stretch fabric woven. Any tips? It's very easy. All you do is you stretch the stretchy fabric to fit the woven. Um, if you want to know how to do, we made this actually, the top I'm wearing, as a three part um, sew along right at the beginning of the first lockdown, right in the summer. Um, and it's up on YouTube. So I think it's part three we talk about how to put the neckband in. So you just do it in exactly the same way. It's not rocket science. I know it kind of people get a bit thrown because you've got two different types of fabric, but actually it is so easy. And once you've kind of nailed that, your list of making stuff is endless then. Um, if you've got an overlocker, it is even easier. If you haven't got an overlocker, just use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine and um, walking foot. If you can use a walking foot where you can, again, that makes it super easy. Um, it's a question of having a little play with it. You might want to set the stitch length and width and stuff like that according to what fabrics you're working with. But it is a joy and a bliss. It really is. Once you get to grips with working with stretch fabrics. They are, they are so easy, they are so much easier to work with than you think, they really are. And modern sewing machines are designed to be able to help you um, so you don't have to kind of fight your sewing machine either. There's loads of things that, um, yeah, so have a go, have a go with it and see how you get on. There we go, oh, let's have a quick look. Oh, Julia says, I rewound the Cordelia so many times I felt dizzy. <laughs> Uh, Patricia says, oh, I've made Cordelia and made it into a maxi dress. Brilliant. It sewed up really well. That's brilliant. Lovely. That's good. I really like that. That's perfect. We're getting good feedback there. That's nice. So this is coming into the fabrics that we used for the Hermione top, not the Ariel, Hermione top last week. Now I've got two lovely kind of slubby jerseys here. Now these are linen mix fabrics believe it or not so they are beautifully soft they are four-way stretch so you stretch it that way and you stretch it that way so you could make leggings or closer fitting garments out of them as well which are really lovely um, and these are oops it goes really nicely with the heathered gray rib so somebody was asking earlier on about the ribs that we do this is one of them so this is lovely. It's got like a, a heathered grey, textured grey and a denim blue in it, which is really nice. So that works with lots of different fabrics too. I quite like it with the white, actually, because it's got that little bit of a contrast there. But it works equally well with the um, blue heathered T-shirt fabric that we've got here. And it will also work with lots of the others as well, which is really nice. So this fabric, actually the small check is one that I used for the Hermione that I showed you last week. And it is a linen and cotton mix fabric, but it is so nice. It is proper, a proper pair of traditional pajamas would be amazing in this. Then you could add a little bit of kind of white piping detail or some really pretty mother of pearl buttons to it. And that would be ideal. There we go. Oops, let's have a quick look. Oh, your sewing machine is 43 years old, Mary. Well, if it's still going strong, then that's brilliant, actually. Um, it may be that you can get a walking foot for it, depending on the model and make of your machine. A lot of the walking feet are pretty universal. So if you Googled it, ask the God of Google, and I'm sure they will reply. They should be able to tell you what you'll be able to use on your machine. Um, Oh, Janet says, I've cut out a toile and a very cheap jersey and will start sewing soon. That's brilliant. The only thing to watch when you're twirling something up in jersey, if you are relying on the stretch for fit, you want to make sure that your twirling fabric has the same percentage of stretch as the fabric that you want to make your finished garment in. Because otherwise, you may find that you overfit your twirl fabric and when you come to make it in your proper fabric, 
there isn't enough stretch there. That's the only thing to just be aware of is try not to overfit your twelve fabric just so that you've got a little bit of leeway when you come to make it up in the proper fabric, which is good. And did you have explained all about the percentage of stretch yep. in various videos, haven't you? Yes, 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 yes. And we also cover it in the Cordelia course in the sewing studio as well. So that's perfect. Um, oh, Mary says you've got a walking foot. Perfect, perfect. That's going to really help you then work with your jersey fabrics. That's ideal. Marvellous. That's good. Um, cool. Oh, no, no, another one. Oh, it is for Cordelia. So, yeah, I wouldn't... Yeah, make up the size you think, but then double check... So you can test the amount of stretch that you've got in your fabric. So percentage of stretch, if you measure out 10 centimetres and then pull, hold one end and pull the other. And so where it wants to sit comfortably, so if it'll go from, say, 10 up to 13, that's going to give you 30% stretch. Does that make sense? I hope so. So... If it goes from 10 to 13, you've got 30. If it goes from 10 to 14, you've got 40% stretch. So you want to make sure that whatever you're using is similar to your proper fabric. And you should be bang on the money. That's really good. Um, this is lovely. I really do adore this fabric. I have got some earmarked for myself for a pair of pyjamas for Christmas Day. I know, it's really lovely. In fact, I think we should have matching his and hers, Charlie. What do you think? Oh, goodness, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. He doesn't realise what I'm making him yet. Oh, OK, what are you making? <laughs> I can't tell you because then it won't be a surprise, will it? Um, <laughs> I quite like this one as well, actually. It's a slightly bigger check. Um, I just think they're so nice. I personally really enjoy wearing um, natural fibres. I just think they're so much more comfortable and uh, anything that's got linen in totally gets my vote anyway. As you probably are aware, linen is my favourite fabric of all time. It has kind of superhero magical properties and it's a really underrated fabric actually. But I love it, I really do. So these are kind of linen ones. I'm going to pop these out way because they're a bit long. And we've got the rib there. I'm going to pop that at the back there. Right, let's get these forwards now. And I'm going to move those ones out of the way. Oops. So again, we've got more long fabrics. We need to get these folded, really. Otherwise, they're just going to get in the way. Now, I want to show you these two. I need a bigger table. In fact, I need a bigger studio all round, actually. There we go. Right, let's get these sorted. So, one of my favourite patterns, and I haven't worn it actually for a while, purely because I've just got into the habit of waking up, getting up, and putting on my kind of uniform of jeans and a top, because I've been a bit lazy, actually. I'll be completely honest, during lockdown. Um, and one of my favourite patterns that I've done is actually the... Cressida jumpsuit which is that one and I almost wore it today but it needed ironing and I didn't have time to do it this morning so <laughs> maybe next time maybe next time yes um originally we did it in a tencel which is this fabric now I did mine in navy that you can see on the website I did it in navy and then did a lot of white top stitching on it which I fell in love with. I thought it was brilliant. I love a bit of top stitching. Um, let's just, oh, I've got some. Yeah, I'm finished. Uh, Sorry, I'm anecdote. getting distracted. Yes, <laughs> I love a bit of top stitching. Um, and then I did one in linen, which I equally, equally love. But I think I want to do another one now in a wool fabric for the winter because I think they just look amazing with a pair of boots or a pair of brogues or something like that for the winter. I think they'd be absolutely lovely. So these are a few fabrics that I thought I would pull out and show you because these would be absolutely perfect for a, cres a winter Cressida. Now, this, these two are Tencel. Now, Tencel, if it's a bit like, um, 
it's kind of like, it's still plant-based, but it's uh, a lot of the time when they produce it, it's what they, close, what they call a closed operation. So all of the water and the chemicals get recycled. So it's actually quite good for the environment, which is a really, obviously a big bonus. Um, cotton, it uses up a huge amount of water a huge amount of water. I mean, it's something ridiculous. So for every pair of jeans, there's like, I don't know, like a thousand litres of water get used or something ridiculous like that. And don't quote me on those, but it is an obscene amount of water. So it's quite nice to be able to find a fabric that you know is going to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Now this is, so it's a bit like viscose where it's kind of reconstituted, chemically treated cellulose fibres, plant fibres, um, but it has, it's almost like washed silk. It has that lovely kind of heavy, soft, drapey feel to it. Um, and it almost feel, has that almost kind of peach skinny sort of feel as well, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, we've got it in the Mulberry, which is this one. And we've got it in Pluto, which is this lovely dark platinum gray. Um, now I think these are just gorgeous and I love both of them. They would equally work in the aerial trousers. There we are. So a really gorgeously soft pair of these. I'm actually thinking these are going to be my alternative to jeans, to be honest, because they are just so wearable. Um, they look great with trainers. I could wear those with Berkeys in the summer. Um, they look great with my DMs or with a pair of lace-up boots or, you know, they just work with loads of different things. So this is the brand new pattern that we've just launched. Um, I have got a pair of navy ones that I've done in a much lighter weight um, viscose, but this is just ideal for this time of year because it has that kind of weight to it, but it's not, so it's not flimsy um, and it will keep you warm actually because it's a really gorgeous fabric. Now we've got some buttons. Where did I put those? There we are. Oops, I'm throwing them around. Where's that gone? There it is. Oh, I'm gonna put those in there. But these ones are lovely. So we've got these. I'm gonna show you these ones. There we go. Don't do a close up, Charlie. Uh, you may have oh, have I got to come closer? There we are. So those are lovely. They're pretty, but they're not like really obvious, mm -hmm. which I think are really nice. So these would work beautifully with the Pluto. So if you were going to do, I don't know if you can see, is it the right angle for you to see that? Uh, there we go. Um, if you're going to do a crested jumpsuit, these would be perfect. They would be so nice. They really would. Um, Oh, Nicola, you just bought the white linen jersey ribbing and the top pattern. Thank you. That's really good. Thank you very much. Matching PJs at Harold and Hilda Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it needs to be done. Oh, I think gosh. it needs to be done. Um, does Charlie sew, Lynn? Uh, no, no, in well, a word. I've, you have done, haven't you? I have done a bit. Yes, Charlie did our intro into sewing course and did a cushion with a beard appliqued onto it and he did a, a zippy bag mm -hmm. with a moustache appliqued onto it obviously and, because why not and, I got and you're halfway through your bag aren't you yeah halfway through the which we actually bag, yeah which i need to finish yes but i couldn't finish it because i had a quick neck oh yeah god that was ages ago wasn't it yeah, years. oh yeah bonkers um Let's have a quick look. Oh yes, there we go. Sharon's popped up the buttons. Black sun print buttons. So those I think are beautiful. Now, this would also work as a Desdemona skirt too, which would be really nice. So let me see if I've got that one in here. I don't know if I have. No, I haven't. Is it behind? Oh, there, it's there. It's just there. Oh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. There we go. Oh, here's one I made earlier. So this is the Desdemona skirt, which is our longer kind of, um, not maxi, more midi kind of length. But uh, it's got pleats or gathers, whichever way you want to use it. And it's got a button through the front 
and pockets as well. So I think the um, Tencel would work really nicely with that actually as well. And then you've got all those lovely buttons down the front, which I think is beautiful. Now we've got some buttons that will go with the mulberry too, which would be rather nice. I'm going to try not to throw them all over the floor and then Sharon won't tell me off. <laughs> There we go, these ones. Now these are really lovely actually. In fact, this is the button that I've used on the aerial trousers. Oh, hello. She's alive. There we are. So, oh, any more comments coming in? I like these. They're a kind of a, almost like a russet. There is a, they are brown, but they have like a kind of a ready undertone to them. And I think those as a, a Cressida or even a Miranda, again, would be really lovely. Uh, can you oh, do you want me to? There we go. So, so they've kind of got a little flower. Again, they're quite subtle, yeah, yeah. but they're really nice. They're very, they very decorative. Oh, nice, huh? Yeah, I like those. Oh, nice. cool. I like those lots. So I think that would work really nicely. Nice little project, actually. A pair of nice boots or um, obviously DMs go with everything, goes that saying. Um, although I have spotted a really nice pair of Berkey boots, actually. Yeah, I know. Birkenstocks do more than just Berkeys. Yeah, I know. Who knew? I know. Who's got a birthday coming up soon? Right, I'm going to pop these out of the way so I don't throw them on the floor. So I think give Tencel a go, actually. It's a really lovely fabric. Um, I'm going to move those out of the way now because they are a bit tall. Um, Have you ever written a blog about Tencel? No, I haven't. Maybe I should. I know, I need to get... Maybe somebody can. Yes. Now these fabric, oh, this is the other one I wanted to show you quickly before I get onto the other ones. Now this is the other quilted one that I was going to show you and it has got, look, silver lurex stripes. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think I really want another Julia top in this. I think it would be so cool. If you are wanting to be a little bit glam but comfy at the same time, then I think this is definitely the fabric for you. I think it's gorgeous, I really do. So you've got a little tiny kind of silvery spot, a little glitter spot, and then you've got glittery stripes as well. <laughs> what is not to love about that, honestly? Oh, let's have a quick look and see if anybody can't see. Oh, oh brilliant, oh, Sharon's popping all the links up. That's brilliant, good. So this is the other, one of the other colorways that we've got in the quilted jersey. So this would be amazing, and I quite fancy that with one of these. Now, this is where it gets really hard for me because these fabrics, as I'm looking at them, are all very different, but it's really hard to get that across through filming because these are the wools and wool mixes. Now, they are so soft, they are so lovely, but they're very subtly different. And because they're a darker color, it doesn't quite come across on as we're filming them, but, this is beautiful. This one is 100% wool and it looks like denim. So it has the same kind of twill weave as denim. But because it is so soft, it is lovely. I really want to make a pair of the aerial trousers out of this because I think a pair of um, wool cargo pants, it kind of does that little kind of it, you've got that little kind of juxtaposition, which I love that word. We used to use that a lot in when I was a fashion lecturer, the juxtaposition of different concepts, blah, blah, blah. But we're back into the real world now. But you've got that kind of slightly formal fabric with an informal kind of shape. And I think that works really nicely, actually. I quite like those two together. Um, so other fabrics that would work for the aerial trousers, again, because they're a little bit more formal, but they're kind of being made, being made up into a casual style, which I think looks really nice. These, as a bomber jacket or something like that, would be really nice as well. 
it's that kind of thing. So you're mixing kind of sooty fabric, but with a much more casual kind of shape, which I really like. Um, these two are the same fabric, but different colorways. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it actually has, it's like a herringbone weave, but it's two-tone. So it's like black, and then it's got navy going through it as well. So it, I think this is just beautiful. I really do. Whether you can see it better on the... Um, Slightly. I, yeah. I can, just yeah. about. It has just a very faint kind of herringbone stripe to it. And it has this kind of mottled black and very dark navy to it as well, which is just gorgeous. This would be really nice in any of our dresses as well. I mean, it's just such a soft, lightweight wool fabric. It's beautiful, but made up in... Um, so this would work perfectly for a, a Desdemona. Um, this actually, as a Cressida, would be really nice as well. Um, it would work for the aerial trousers, which would be really good. Um, not for that one, not for that one. Oh, actually, you could get away with making it as a, a regan, actually, and have a, a kind of a wool suiting regan, but with really interesting rib and cuffs. I think that would be another really interesting way of mixing fabrics and patterns, just so that you get a much more kind of modern, up-to-date sort of twist on it, which is really good. Of course, it would obviously work for Porsche trousers as well. So again, that's the kind of traditional use for it. But sometimes it's quite nice to kind of just mix it up a bit and do something a bit different, which I think is quite cool. Um, but these would definitely be suitable. So this is the same fabric. It has that herringbone kind of weave, but this is black and charcoal. So again, you've got a little bit of texture because you've got the two colours together and you've got that little tiny kind of herringbone which comes through. These are absolutely exquisite fabrics. They really are. Um, and it's, it's one of those things, when you just see them on the website, you don't kind of get excited about them, but the, the uses that you can put these to are endless. They really are. You could do so many different things with these. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then the last one I want to show you is this one, which I did get out last week. This is the kind of micro check. Oh, are you looking to see if there's questions? Oh, let me have a quick look. Uh, what about Kate? Absolutely, Beth. Yep, it would, be wor it would work beautifully. Uh, Christian says, think wool scares me online in case it's itchy. No, these are not itchy at all. I've done the kind of inside the wrist test. Even Sharon, who's like, oh no, I can't touch that because it's itchy. She's had a look at these and they are absolutely, they pass the Sharon out. test. Oh no, 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 but yeah. <laughs> no, it's not actually at all, no. Um, they've passed the Sharon test. So they are deliciously, they are really soft. If I really wish we'd got feely vision because they are so lovely. Um, so Christine, don't be frightened about the feel of them. Does wool fabric wash well? I would be inclined to wash it as little as possible. We've had this conversation on previous weeks. It's, I know it sounds really, I really don't wash my clothes. I do, obviously, but I try to wash them uh, as few a times as I can. Now, wool will wash, but it could shrink. So I would probably spot clean it, um, give it a good stiff brush, hang it outside again, which will give it a good airing. Um, unless you're wearing it right next to your skin, um, I would probably wash it as little as possible, actually. Um, and I would, you yeah. What about uh, hanging it outdoors? The ultraviolet. Yeah, it kills bacteria. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is actually how they used to sterilise milk churns many years ago. There we go. Oh. Yeah, put them outside in the sunshine. I didn't know that. There you go. Every day is school day. Yes, pub <laughs> quiz, pub quiz questions. That's because I'm a Radio 4 listener, you see. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, we've got some more comments coming in. Hang on. Um, could you do a Helena in the wool? Oh, yes, Mary. Helena in the wool would be absolutely lovely. It's lightweight enough because it's kind of like soft suiting fabric. It would absolutely work perfectly for Helena and the pin tucks would look amazing. They would look really good, actually. Uh, oh, let's have a quick look and see. 
Yeah, oh, look, she, Sharon has replied, it's definitely not itchy. There we go. That's brilliant. Uh, Lynn said, oh, just bought some linen and ribbing. Oh, fantastic. Perfect, perfect. This is another one, actually. Now, this is... I'm trying to find the fibre content here. I know it's a wool mix. No, it'll be up on that. Actually, Sharon's just popped it up there, hasn't she? That's per bird's eye check. Yeah, indigo. This is another one that's really nice, actually. And I think I quite like these buttons. Now, these are coconut, but I think they give a lovely matte kind of finish there, which are really nice. So again, this would be perfect for a um, crested jumpsuit. And I think that's lovely. Really like that, actually. Ooh. Do you know what? I wish I'd got more time. I really wish I'd got more time because my wardrobe would be extensive, actually, because there are so many things on my wish list here. In fact, Sharon and I were talking earlier on about, I don't really know what to make at the moment. We're kind of feeling a bit, mm. but actually I'm just looking at the fabrics and trying to kind of see them with the patterns is a brilliant way to kind of get your sewing mojo back again. If you are, because let's face it, we've all got a stash, haven't we? I know mine's huge upstairs and I've also got a whole shop here. So I'm a little bit sport for choice. Um, what's quite nice sometimes is to get it out and have a look at it. Not just to stroke it, obviously, but to kind of think about putting your patterns with it and working out what you would make, sort of almost creating your fantasy wardrobe. A bit like fantasy football, which I don't do. But fantasy wardrobe, I think, is a brilliant way. And that way you can start to plan out what you would make with your fabric. Now, obviously, sometimes fabric is there just to be stroked and probably won't ever get made, let's be honest, really. But I think the other times you really kind of need to justify why you've got it and what you would make with it. Now, I do this and I have little drawings that I do that I put with my fabric in the boxes that I've got upstairs. So when I open the fabric up, I know, I think, oh yeah, I was gonna do one of those with it. It might change, it usually does, let's to be honest, because you kind of have a look at it and you start planning out what you're going to do. But six months down the road, you might wanna change it and do something different. So, but it's still a nice exercise to go through so that you are kind of planning out what you're going to do. Then it's quite nice to kind of make a list of the things. I don't know about you, I'm a little bit of a spontaneous stitcher, probably because I don't have a lot of time at the moment. Um, so I tend to think, oh, I need to make a, and that's it, I'll, that's what I'll do, um, rather than kind of planning it out. But next year, I do want to start doing planning stuff. Um, and because we're still going through the diploma process, and I will, I know I keep mentioning it, but this year's just put everything on hold. But one of the things that we want to do with the diploma is start to think about constructing a wardrobe and what pieces, what colours, what shapes and things like that work really well together. So that's one of the things that start thinking about. Why not? We're going to be around at home doing whatever for quite a while yet. So it might be quite a nice little exercise to do. My daughter used to get all of her clothes out and put more outfit ideas together. So why not put your fabrics and patterns as outfit ideas as well, which is quite a nice way of spending a wet Wednesday afternoon. Right, oh, there we go. Sharon's popped up some more dress patterns up there as well. Uh, yes, Sharon says she's thinking of the Emilio in the bird's eye check. I think that would be nice. I think that would be very nice. I think that would work really well. Um, there we go. So I'm hoping we've given you a few suggestions there a few ideas, um, a few things that you might want to have a go at that you might not have thought about. Oh, seriously, this wool is absolutely to die for. It is so soft. It really is. I would not lie to you. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we've got formal fabrics with informal patterns. We've got comfy jersey. We've got pyjama fabrics. It is all about comfort at the moment. I think that's the way forward, isn't it, really? We need to be comfortable. We need to be at home for a while. So why not make something that you can wear at home rather than anything too formal? Although I'm going to be really looking forward to the pictures of you guys uh, with what you've made from the brocade fabrics that we had on last week. One question. What is all the stuff that you've put in the sewing studio recently? Oh yes, are you a member of the sewing studio? We've put loads of things in there recently. Um, 
we are gradually catching up with ourselves now. This year has been an absolute nightmare for all kinds of different reasons. Um, and we are building a, a, a lot more content now. Um, we're going to be having more stuff going in in December. We've got a couple of more projects to go in for November as well. Um, so we've got the Hermione in there. We've got the tie we've got the bow tie which also make really good presents because let's face it we're not going to be able to go out shopping i would much rather buy from kind of indie companies than do a massive amazon shop i don't know about you but i'm quite keen on supporting local businesses or making stuff so with the bag patterns you know you can make those we've got all of those in the sewing studio we've got the tie we've got the bow tie um, we're going to be putting some other courses in there next month as well We've got some really lovely ideas for hand sewing that are going to be going into the studio later on this month. We've kind of drip fed it in. So we've got a little bit of a, a kind of a dollop of stuff at the beginning of the month. And then we're going to add a few other bits and pieces in there too to keep you um, to keep you sewing. So there you go, Charlie. That's an answer to your question there. Thank you. I, I actually thought other people might quite like I know. know. They uh, would actually, uh, yes. Well, um, would the diploma be online? Jan, we're looking at it at the moment. We're looking at it. Um, it's, we were hoping to get people in here because, to be honest, there is no substitute for having somebody looking over your shoulder saying, oh, actually, if you just move your hand there or just, if you just want to do it like this, there's no substitute for that, which is why we haven't done any Zoom workshops yet. Um, it's one of those things. I would love to be able to do it online and we are going to look at possibly doing it both ways. It just takes a little bit of time and thought because what we'd originally planned was very kind of studio focused and then you go off and do your own thing with a little bit of support online. So how we can readjust that to making it all online and hoping that you still come out with the outcome that we want you to at the end, it's a question of how we're going to make that work. So, yeah, bear with us for a bit. Um, I knew if I mentioned it, somebody would ask questions, which is <laughs> brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, so I'm hoping we're going to be able to get that live. There we go. Uh, oh, Julia says you've been given an order for the Christmas stockings. Brilliant. That's another of the projects that we've got in the studio as well. You've got your downloadable. All your patterns are downloadable for free if you're a member. Um, and we talk you through everything step by step in there as well. So we've got the scrappy wreath, which you can get the kits for. Um, We've got the stocking. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the advent bunting, which is lovely, which I did have strung up, but that's uh, I'll put that away now. So there's loads of things. So if you are a member of the sewing studio, have a good old trawl through. Um, we did send out an email letting you know what was in there. If you haven't received it, please let me know because we need to double check and make sure that everybody's on the right lists. So hopefully there'll be loads in there. Um, Oh, let's have a quick look. We've got some more comments. Uh, Mary says, you love Charlie's off-page, off-stage prompts. I know he's very good at that. He's very good at because I waffle on. And he's like, actually, three, two, one, back in the room. This is what you need to talk about. So that's really good. Um, oh, Janet says, I have just a separate webcam so my local sewing mentor can see what I'm up to. That's really interesting, actually. That's really good. Um, oh, and making two hot, Deborah's making two hot water bottle covers, which is another of the projects that we've got in the sewing studio as well. So that's really cool. Yeah. Janet, it's very much down to what you, what the setup is in your own home, isn't it? If you've got a camera or a webcam or something like that, where it's easy for someone else to see what you're doing, it's much easier for them to be able to give you the help and the support. But we can't guarantee that everyone's going to have a similar setup. Maybe that should be a criteria for the diploma, I don't know. Actually, maybe if Janet could actually let us know what she has. And yeah, Janet, can you send us, email us a photo of your setup? That would be yeah. really interesting to see, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, just send it to hello, send me something at gmail.com and we'll be able to grab it from there. That's perfect. Um, Oh, Claire says, love the sewing studio, but not sure if there are documents in Slack. No, Slack is just purely for people chatting to each other and asking questions. So that's our community. So all of the documents, all of the PDF patterns will be with each course or project in the sewing studio. So there should be a little kind of teacher's notes bit at the very beginning, and that will have the link to the download that you need for it. So it's all actually in the sewing studio itself. Slack is just for having a chat, really. 
um, and, asking questions. and asking questions. Oh, blimey, you guys are um, really good. Gillian's made 16 Christmas stockings. What? Oh, my word. That That's an award. I know. We ought to have Blue Peter badges or something like that, shouldn't we? For Yeah. Uh, so That's so very cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Janet said, oh, it costs 40 quid. Brilliant. That would be really interesting, actually. Um, oh, Gillian says, Advent bunting is lovely, too. I know my kids really love theirs, actually. They'll be hooking theirs out already, even though they're in their 20s. So they still want to have Advent calendars. Although, actually, Seamus would just eat it all in one go, wouldn't he? He's really naughty. He just opens all the chocolates and just morphs them down in one go. <laughs> outrageous, outrageous. Um, Sharon, the sewing studio is 20 quid a month. We've just kept it at that because there's loads of patterns. So you've got five in-depth courses that are probably, uh, that's nearly 30 hours of teaching there already for 20 quid a month which isn't bad i think actually we've got all of the um you get the pdf patterns for the projects in there as well um you've got the pdf patterns for the bag projects and the christmas projects as well and we're adding more stuff in all the time now we're kind of sort of returning to normal we've got a lot more time that we're going to be spending on adding in content for the sewing studio so we've got big plans for next year um, so that's it. And you don't have to, there, is a, there isn't a minimum time that you've got to sign up for either. So you could try. Don't forget, we've got the free infinity scarf. So you can always um, sign up for that one. And then you can kind of get a taster for what the rest of the sewing studio is like. So you can try before you buy kind of thing. Hopefully that will give you an idea as to what we're doing. Oh, um, oh Linda, are we getting any of the grey felt well, yes, we are. I've just been putting an order in for a load of stuff this morning. So hopefully next week we'll have even more fabrics in to show you. And some of them are going to be repeated as well. So we've got more of the other lovely stuff that we've had in that we've sold out of already. So <laughs> that's brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed today. I hope you've got some ideas um, and putting different things together, which is fantastic. Um, do come and find us in the sewing studio. Um, and then you can come and chat to us in the Slack community there. We've also got the FB page as well. So I've got F Send Me Something Friends, our FB group. And that's lovely. There's loads of really lovely people in there to help and support each other, which is what it's all about at the moment, isn't it, really? Um, so have a fabulous rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you next week. So, yeah, happy sewing. Take care. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>